Hey guys, welcome back to the shop today. We are talking about the 36 Dodge project. So I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about it. So stay tuned. Now for those of you who are new to the channel, this is my dad's 1936 Dodge D4. Now these things did not come as equipped, but my dad bought this vehicle as a runner. It has the drivetrain out of a 71 duster, so it's a 340. It's got the uh, third member style rear differential. He just got done putting some rear gears in it, and right now we're trying to get to the bottom of a noise in the motor. I'm gonna put up here a playlist from this vehicle because we've talked about this in previous videos before. The short story is that as soon as dad put a new cam in that 340 we started getting some noises and let me show you what we're talking about so of course this is the motor all tore down now however when we put the cam in what the cam is going to do is it's got taller lobes it's going to push the valves open a little bit further and what we eventually found out was that the valves were coming down and they were hitting the top of the pistons well in some cases that might mean you got too big of a cam in your engine. Well, if the person who built this motor had done it right, then we likely would never would have had an issue. And because of that noise and those valves just barely hitting the top of the pistons, uh, we felt like we were getting a vibration and the vibration is still there. We've tried several different things. We've tried the TCI Rattler harmonic balancer, which basically has little shot in it. And uh, if you were to take it out of the box and shake it, you'd hear it rattling around in there. And that helps distribute uh, any irregularities or unbalanced crank uh, drive line of any sort. Uh, but the, the vibrations were still there. So what we found out was the pistons on, a, on four of the cylinders were installed wrong and let me show you why we feel they were installed wrong. So here we are with some 340J heads. Now these are the same style and casting number heads that I just put on my Chrysler Cordoba last year. But if you look at the valves, it should go small, big, big, small, which it does on these two, and then it should go small, big, big, small. And as you can see, on this one so these two are in the wrong spot they're gonna have to be switched and then if we come over here we've got another problem we've got big small and it should be small big and then small big big small these two are okay and these two are backwards so judging by the valves in the heads we feel that there's no damage done there we don't think that they were pounding up against them we think that they were just barely coming into contact so dad is going to swap those pistons around to make sure that they're right and again in hopes that that's where the potential vibration is coming from i'm trying to convince them to take that crank out send it to a machine shop have it balanced that way you're eliminating having to tear this engine apart one more time so for this reason, with him concentrating on the motor on this vehicle, is the reason why we're not jumping right in to the 350 rebuild on my Project Dale. Because we're going to need the engine stand and engine crane here to look after this one. And then, once this is put to bed, we will be able to get started on that for Dale. While we've got the car here in the shop, I wanted to give you guys a quick look at some updates that's been done to this car, probably since the last time you guys saw it. So let's take a look at the interior. So as we come in here, he does have the floor, the carpeting down here. And as you work our way into the back, we've also got the carpet on the floor as well as the seats firmly fastened in the back. Now, some of you guys might be looking at these seats and saying, well, they look quite familiar. Well, they should. They're out of a Toyota Matrix. And yes, they fit quite comfortably in the back. And in the trunk here, we've got all the liner done all up around the back and front sides here, as well as he's got a cover over the custom made storage compartment in the floor. Let me show you that. So when I say it was custom made, when he built the floor pan in the trunk, 
he had a tin box that he made fit so that he could store a jack or some whatever he wanted to under there and that's where that goes. So unlike one of my father's previous vehicles like this one that had a similar trunk set up, it had a shelf in it. So he may put a shelf in here to help create more floor space and maybe even hide that spare tire. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the tour of my dad's 1936 Dodge and we'll be getting back to that once everything gets put back together, including a full review on this car and a test drive. So I hope you stay tuned for that. The Car Guy and Six Fan Show this week will be on Grant Tommy's page. His link is the second one in the description box below. I hope you can head on over to his channel, subscribe to him, and help support his channel as well. And that way you'll get notified when the Car Guy and Six Fan Show goes live on his channel. You see, we alternate the show on each other's channel every week. This week it's him, next week it'll be back on mine. If you don't know what the Car Guy and Six Fan Show is, it's just a couple of guys chatting about cars, having a really good time with a chat room full of automotive enthusiasts. So guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again real soon.